What a day it was for Iowa men's basketball. Two commits, one for the 23 class, one for the 24 class, and then Keegan Murray taken at number four overall in the NBA draft. He is now in Sacktown, Sacramento, California, uh, the uh, incumbent star for the Kings. Just a great day for exposure uh, for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Fran McCaffrey's program and reputation. I mean, we we talked about that in a video last night here, right here on this channel, but just having a guy go top five, I think that's so much better than top 10, certainly better than top 15 or top 20. I think having a guy in the top five going number four overall just helps the persona of your program, if that makes sense. But we are here to talk about the commitment of a Brock Harding. Didn't get to this video yesterday because uh, it was a wildly busy day. Uh, I mentioned Cooper Koch did a video on him yesterday, the four-star uh, out of Peoria committing to the Hawkeyes. Brock Harding just up the road up in Moline. We'll talk about his commitment to the Hawkeyes, what I was getting in this young potential star in the making. Very, very, very unique college player. We're going to talk about our college prospect, I should say. First, I want to thank our sponsor, Ascent Nutrition. They are doing wonderful things in the field of health. Now, they've got this organic coffee. Most people don't realize that many of the coffees you buy in the store have molds, mycotoxins. This is organic mold and mycotoxin-free coffee. All right, you can order your bag at www.goascentnutrition.com. That's goascentnutrition.com. If you're listening to this podcast, be sure to use the code Hawkeyes. That's Hawkeyes, H-A-W-K-E-Y-E-S, Hawkeyes at checkout. If you do that, you'll receive 10% off your total order, and they do have whole bean coffee and freshly ground coffee. That's GoAscentNutrition.com. Use the code Hawkeyes. So Brock Harding commits to the Iowa Hawkeyes, and what a day it was. Brock Harding, kind of the, the middle piece of the busy, active day committing uh, several hours after Cooper Koch uh, made his announcement official on social media. Brock Harding had just been offered by Iowa just days prior to his announcement. Now, for those of you that don't know, he did visit Iowa. He was on an unofficial visit prior to his announcement. So he gets the offer, uh, ends up taking an unofficial visit to Iowa City, kind of sealed the deal, heard an interview with uh, Matt Randazzo, who works uh, does some media in the Quad Cities area. Uh, Brock Harding just talked about how he he really just needed to go to Iowa City one last time to solidify his choice. It just seemed like he was waiting on that Iowa offer, and once he got it, he pulled the trigger. So I give Fran McCaffrey a lot of credit. Once again, now this will have to play out, right? But once again, here's a prospect in eastern Iowa that no other Power 5 school has offered. All right, does that sound familiar? A la Keegan Murray, Chris Murray, those guys. Um, so Brock Harding committed to the Hawkeyes. Let's look at his other offers. So according to Rivals, this is just a list of the offers in order, Appalachian State, Bradley, uh, Cal Poly, Colorado State, Drake, Eastern Illinois, IPFW, Illinois State, Loyola, Radford, Rice, St. Louis, Southeast Missouri State, Southern Illinois, Illinois, Chicago, Western Illinois. Now, according to rivals, Illinois, Indiana, Marquette, Purdue, Robert Morris, Wisconsin, Xavier were all in on Brock Harding, but hadn't pulled the trigger yet on an offer. And the offers were continuing to roll in. I mean, that Drake offer, um, that's a notable one because, of course, Iowa getting Matt Gatons, former Hawkeye, but former Drake assistant over to their side. So that had to have helped having a guy who is a really good shooter in Brock Harding, having a guy like Matt Gatons now on staff, and kind of that extra pull since Drake had already offered. Uh, I'm sure that helped. I'm not saying that Iowa wouldn't have offered had Matt Gatons not been hired on, but that had to have helped the cause. Brock Harding also, for those of you don't know that don't know, he is the teammate of 23 commit Owen Freeman, who transferred into Moline High School. Those two guys also play AAU ball together. Owen Freeman, a 6'10 big from uh, Illinois as well. So um, those guys will have camaraderie. I know they're they're close on the court. I believe they're close off the court as well. Here's what I see from Brock Harding on tape. And this is why I believe Brock Harding can be special. We all love the ability of a guy like Jordan Bohannon to make three-point shots. And I think that's going to be the comparison for a lot of people just because that's what we're, we've been accustomed to seeing, a, a six-foot uh, local point guard who was under-recruited. Jordan Bohannon was written off by a lot of high-major programs because of his lack of athleticism, because of his size, and he overcame the odds. Now, did Jordan have his shortcomings? Certainly. Defensively, we know uh, he struggled to move laterally. 
Um, he's not your most physical guy. I never thought he finished real well around the rim. That just wasn't his game. And yet he's, I think even those of us that maybe didn't think that Jordan uh, had an opportunity to play pro basketball when he got here, I think he will be playing pro basketball. I mean, I, I think he will. If he wants to do that, he'll find a spot overseas. And he is one of the better point guards that's played ever at Iowa. I'm not saying he's top five, but I think he probably is in the conversation of top 10. Look at all the records he's broke. Now, I know he was here, what, six years. I get that. But Brock Harding has an opportunity to follow in those footsteps to some degree. And here's why I think Brock Harding's ceiling is higher. Brock Harding has some physical traits that Jordan Bohannon doesn't have. Some of the quickness that Jordan Bohannon lacked. You even see it on the offensive side of things. You watch him on tape. Certainly, we're looking at highlight film. So you really have to watch full game film. I'm going to be watching lots of game film, whatever I can get my hands on, because I'm excited when you watch him on tape. This is one of the more exciting highlight films that you're going to see of any Iowa recruit at any level that we've had. And that, I'm not, not even joking. I'm not saying that it's going to translate into Brock Harding being the best thing that's ever happened at Iowa, but he is exciting to watch on the court, especially in his highlight film, his crossover. He's got quickness. Talked about lateral speed. I mean, he's going to struggle at times, I think, defend if he can't get bigger. Right now, Rivals has him listed at what? A buck 50, buck 55, uh, standing at about six foot tall. But he has talked about in interviews that he's been counted out most of his life. Sounds very familiar to Jordan Bohannon. And six foot's plenty big to play at, at, at the Power Five level. The question is, can you defend at this level? I think he's got quickness. Now, defensively, I know it's a little bit different, but he's shown the ability to move side to side laterally. I think... Uh, from a tape standpoint, offensively, much quicker than a guy like Jordan Bohannon. So if Jordan Bohannon can do it, at least hold his own. I know he struggled at times. I certainly think Brock Harding can develop into such. Now, if Brock Harding can put on, you know, 15, 20 pounds, maybe a bit more. I mean, that's, again, we're talking 155. That's pretty darn light. But I I mean, who knows? If he can get 20, 25, maybe 30 pounds, maybe that's too much. I, I don't know what Fran and this uh, strength and conditioning staff, where they want him. But he's got another year of high school playing with Owen Freeman at Moline. Um, I, I'm excited about his game. Now, other things that stood out to me on tape, he's got a good three-point shot and good range. You watch him on tape, I wouldn't be surprised if he would tell you that he's emulated much of his game after a guy like Steph Curry. I mean, a lot of guys his age are probably kind of molding their game after Steph because Steph has changed the game of basketball, whether you like Steph or not. And I'm not saying Brock Harding is going to be the next Steph Curry. But there was some of that in Jordan Bohannon's game, even more so in Brock Harding's game, because Brock has better handles than Jordan from just a, a quickness, a break you down agility standpoint. Not saying that Brock is going to be able to protect the ball as well as Jordan did, because Jordan did not turn the ball over. And that's one of the things that kept him in the starting lineup his whole career. Despite the fact that he was great from three point land, if he was turning the ball over, uh, you would not have seen the type of playing time that he got through six years. Brock Harding's also got a real quick release, which you need at this level. That is huge. The fact that he gets the ball off quick, especially at his size, he can shoot off the dribble. He can shoot off the catch. We saw Jordan Bohannon even struggle with that at times this past year. Remember, he struggled at the two. Now, I don't want to put all the blame on Joe Toussaint. Certainly, I, I think that uh, relationship, the the one-two dynamic with Joe and Jordan, certainly maybe at times could have been better. But I think Jordan just struggled getting shots off, whether you're talking about running off screens and actually moving without the ball, but just the ability to shoot off the uh, off the catch. And I think Jordan could do that, but Brock Harding has shown on tape that he's comfortable either shooting off the dribble or shooting off the catch, which could pot potentially give Iowa some flexibility, especially looking down the road, DeSante Bowen, uh, Brock Harding in the lineup together at times. Certainly there's not a lot of size there, but I think Iowa could probably pull that off. He's got good vision, certainly a good passer from what he shows on film. Um, you need that in a point guard. Obviously, he's got savvy point guard skills. We talked about his quickness, his ability to cross over in front, behind the back. He finishes well with the left hand. He's got a nice little pull up in the lane, a little floater. So defensively is the, the big question. Can he defend at the Big Ten level? And he's obviously proven a lot of people wrong already. And I think this is a steal. I mean, I, I may sound like the biggest sloppiest homer because I come on here with Cooper Koch and now with... Uh, Brock Harding and talk about how excited I am. I'm genuinely excited about this commitment and I would not be surprised to see more, uh, more guys, more offers coming in, more schools getting involved here. But uh, I think he's a Hawkeye and I think he's here to stay, especially given the relationship with him and Owen Freeman.
Fran's got some momentum, folks, on the recruiting trail. I like where things are headed. So lock it right here. Subscribe to From the Hawkeye of the Storm. Turn notifications on. Turn notifications on because we'll be with you covering everything Iowa recruiting, basketball, football, and the like right here. From the Hawkeye of the Storm, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast and your content. We'll talk to you soon.